In this video, I'm going to compare Bone Lab and Boneworks physics to see the differences, if there are any, as well as look at other things like AI, movement, graphics, and then I'll compare the story mode campaigns. Let's start with the physics and look at weight simulation. This is one of the big things with these physics focused VR games where you have objects of different weight and depending on how heavy they are, depends on how hard or easy it is to handle and move them around. If we grab this knife, it's one to one. So as I move my hand around, the knife, my wrist position, etc. is exactly as it is in real life. If we go for something heavier, like this baseball bat, now there's some delay, but you can still one-hand it, and the bat will swing making good contact, but if we two-hand it, then it becomes one-to-one -one with our hand movements again. Going heavier still, we've got a fire axe, which has the weight on one end. Now when I try to one-hand it, it feels sluggish and unresponsive, with the end of the axe bouncing and wobbling slightly before it comes to a stop. If we two-hand it, there's still some weight, but it's much faster and it will do more damage. If we pick up this long sword, it will again be a bit more sluggish, but it's actually faster and more usable than the axe. This is because the weight is spread evenly throughout the weapon, whereas the axe has all the weight at the end. And again, two-handing it makes it very fast and deadly. If we go even heavier, like with the sledgehammer, then one-handing it becomes very unwieldy, bouncy and uncontrollable, as you'd expect from such a heavy-weighted object. If we two-hand it, it's very fast, and because it has that extra weight at the end, it has momentum that falls through, which causes more damage than a smaller light weapon. If we go for something really heavy, like this big box, I can't pick it up with one hand. I'm trying to lift my hand up in real life, but my in-game hand simply won't move. If I use both hands, then you can just about lift it up, but even if I lift my real hands above my head, it still only just lifts it off the ground. So let's do the same tests in Bone Lab. Before I do that, I have to mention that Bone Lab now has an avatar system where you can switch to different avatars and they have different stats. So some are stronger, some are faster, some can jump higher, etc. For these tests, I'm using the Ford avatar as this is the same avatar from Boneworks, but I can't see the stats for Boneworks, so there might be some differences in strength, etc. But from testing, they do feel very similar. If we take the small knife, again, it feels the same. It's got one-to-one -one movement. The baseball bat, again, very similar. You can swing it one and two handed, but feels more responsive with both hands. Where they start to differ is when you add more weight. If we pick up the fire axe, it's a little bit more bouncy one handed, but it comes back to a stop pretty quickly. It now feels like it has the more weight at the end of the axe. And when you swing it one handed, that weight carries on through, creating momentum, whereas with bone works, it almost feels like there's some sort of drag when you use it one handed, making it feel very sluggish. The long sword feels very similar to bone works, but the sledgehammer really shows off the improvements of that momentum and how the weight being at the end affects it. If I just hold the end of the handle and hold my arm out, you can see that the weight at the end is causing it to lank down and I can't hold it straight. The sledgehammer is more bouncy, but it feels right. It's something that's difficult to show in videos because there's a feeling you get with the way that the weapons move compared to your real hands. I made a couple of videos on Boneworks before critiquing the physics and I wasn't a fan of the heavy bounce of the original release they then did a patch updating the physics and I compared the two and thought they made some improvements but still not perfect. Bone Lab feels like they found a nice middle ground with the weighted physics and it's hard for me to find fault with it. Finally, let's lift the box. I can actually lift it slightly now with one hand and it lifts higher with two. This could be because of the differences between this avatar and the Boneworks one. And you can see if I switch to this buff boy who actually looks like me if I were six foot tall, lifted weights and had tattoos. It can lift the box much higher. So let's actually put these weapons to use in both games and see how they feel against enemies. In Boneworks and Bone Lab, the combat knife feels identical. You can easily stab null bodies anywhere in the body. The baseball bat is usable both one and two handed, and it actually feels better one handed because you can get more momentum, but just like before, it's when you add more weight you see the difference. If we use the fire axe, in Boneworks one handed it's unusable because there's no momentum. It just doesn't swing. If you compare that to Bone Lab, and even though the axe is more bouncy, it has more weight at the end, so when you swing it, that momentum drives the axe down and it's very effective. You still have more control for both with two hands, but Bone Lab feels much better one handed. It's the same with the sledgehammer. It's usable one hand in Bone Lab, but not really in Bone Works. And even two handed, it feels better in Bone Lab, and overall, I find the melee combat in Bone Lab much improved, which was definitely a weak point for the first game. If we use the big sword, stabbing feels better and overall it's more usable in Bone Lab, but slashing and striking in both games still feels more like a blunt weapon 
with Blade not penetrating enemies unless you're using the end of the sword. If we just go back to the sledgehammer and switch to the little anime character, you can see that it's now much heavier and it really shows off the way the position of the weight being at the end changes the behaviour of the weapon. Let's look at the gun handling. If we start with pistols in Boneworks, it doesn't have a button for ejecting the magazine for some reason. You could do it by holding down the B button then selecting eject in a menu. You could also grab near the bottom of the pistol or bring the new magazine up to the bottom and the old one would eject out although sometimes the old magazine would get in the way. Now in Bone Lab, you have an eject button just like every other VR game. You can still do it all the other ways but personally I wish that they removed the grabbing from the bottom of the pistol as I would sometimes try to two hand the gun and end up grabbing the magazine by mistake which gets pretty annoying. They've really improved the hand interactions with Bone Lab. The hands would snap on and off the parts of the gun that you're interacting with and sometimes the wrist would bend in awkward ways. They've clearly put some time into this to smooth out the hand interactions and polish up the ways the hands and wrists move when grabbing things. Recoil is also different. With the pistol, it's the same for both games with no real recoil one or two handed, but the pistols do jump around more in Boneworks. When you go full auto, things change though. The MP5 jumps around one handed in Boneworks, but it's much more stable two handed with low spread. In Bone Lab, the gun doesn't move anywhere near as much one handed, and it's the same for the carbine. Recoil is actually tied to the avatar's strength, so if you use the little anime girl again, you can see that the MP5 jumps around even more than in Boneworks. In Boneworks, the way the guns jump could make using the hollow sights on some guns tricky, so the reduced movement makes them more enjoyable for me to use personally, but that's subjective. Bone Lab does have a new type of gun though, with shotguns finally making an appearance, including pump action shotguns. So we've covered the melee, the guns, so now let's take a look at enemies in both games to see what the AI is like. We'll start with Boneworks and I laid out these concrete blocks with a gap in the middle. I spawned an old body and to my surprise it actually navigates through and around the blocks no problem. I spawned three of them and again they made their way around and now we can start to see some of the problems with the AI with any of the enemies that got legs. With dead bodies in the way they struggle and they'll fall over. Now I already know what some people are going to say because they already left me comments on a VR physics video I made before. The null bodies are supposed to be dumb, they're the lowest beings in the game and it's part of the law. So let's put that to the test and use the Ford. He is actually the same. And actually, whilst experimenting, I discovered that while they walk around solid immovable objects like those concrete blocks, if something is movable, they don't. So with these tables, Ford will just keep walking into them rather than going around. Slopes are also an issue. I loaded into the Tuscany level and spawn some enemies and they just keep falling over trying to get to me. So has this been improved in Bone Lab? No, it's actually exactly the same. Again they'll walk around solid objects but then they get stuck if something is movable. So here are the skeletons doing it. Here's Ford. Here is a null body. And here is a security guard. Slopes are also the same. I actually tried to spawn some enemies in the Tuscany level in the same spot, but for some reason, no matter what I did, they just wouldn't move. I put this shallow ramp in the museum basement area and got the same result. In fact, if you leave them long enough, they'll actually hit their head on the floor and kill themselves. Any humanoid character with legs will have this same problem. All you need is a table or a slope to beat them. What about some of the other enemies in the games? We've got head crabs, which again will navigate solid fixed objects, and they jump at you, but they can still get stuck on movable objects, but because they can jump, it's not as bad. You also have the guys on the rollerballs, which is obviously a way that the developers found to work around the leg issue. The rollerball dudes are good. They're fast, they'll move around things, and they don't seem to get stuck as often. These are the two best enemies in the game and the most fun to fight. The others are just dumb, slow, clumsy and no real challenge. There are also no new enemies in Bone Lab. Everything is just a reskin of the existing Boneworks bad guys. So the skeletons are reskin null bodies and the security guards are reskin Fords. It's pretty disappointing after three years that they couldn't improve the existing AI or give us some new enemies to fight. I always enjoyed the gunplay in Boneworks even if the AI was done for some of the enemies. And now that the melee has been improved for Bone Lab, 
I do find that fun as well. The big problems that I had with Boneworks was the physics puzzles and the climbing. You end up fighting with the controls and it left me frustrated. So let's see if the movement and climbing is better in Bone Lab. I think the biggest thing in Boneworks was actually trying to get on top of a ledge. You could climb up something but now you've got to get on top of it. The trick to this is pulling yourself up as high as possible then if you push down on the right thumbstick you actually bring your legs up and then once the legs are on top of the platform you push up to stand up. It works but it's still clunky and feels like I'm fighting with the controls to do it. Bone Lab feels about the same. Even with the different avatars you still fumble around trying to get on top. I will say that the climbing overall is better with the other avatars as it's less bouncy and sickness inducing compared to Boneworks but the climbing and physics based puzzle stuff is still my least favourite parts of the game and the fact that they decided to double down on this element for the campaign is pretty mind blowing and it really made me hate this game more than I loved it. I'm going to cover the campaign in more detail in a second but let's just look at this where I need to move a barrel to stand on it to jump and grab those poles to climb over the pit of lava type stuff. This is a lesson in patience and it's frustrating. The barrel kept falling over when I tried to stand on it and it even made me fall into the poison killing me. Then when I do get on there I try to climb round with the pole and I end up getting stuck and it gets all kinds of janky. Before I talk about the campaign, let's compare the graphics. Boneworks graphics are competent but nothing special and I do feel like Bone Lab is a step above in many areas with some nicer material effects. You can see in the museum basement level, if I lay a sledgehammer on the ground, you can see that the yellow part of the handle is reflected slightly on the tarmac, which isn't there for Boneworks. They've also used a lot of volumetric lighting in Bone Lab. It's too much in some areas, making things look blurry and out of focus, but I do think that volumetric lighting can really add a lot to the lighting as it makes the air more dense and feel more real compared to without it in Boneworks. One thing that I will suggest is if you're on PC, make sure to set the LOD bias to max, otherwise you get horrible popping on things like the null bodies. Let's go over the campaign. I'll start with some spoiler free stuff then go into more specific campaign levels and moments. Check the timestamps if you want to skip past that part as I'm going to go over the extra modes and mods after. The story campaign in Boneworks was good. I didn't really enjoy the first hour or the last hour mainly because of the focus on climbing and physics puzzles. But in the middle section of the game when it's focused on the combat it was fun. It took me 8 hours so I had 6 hours of fun and 2 hours of annoyance and frustration. The Bone Labs campaign took me 5 hours and I enjoyed the first 30 minutes, the last hour and some small sections in the middle but out of the 5 hours I probably enjoyed 2 and the other 3 were some of the most frustrated I've been in a video game for a long time. As I mentioned before, they really doubled down on the climbing and physics stuff in Bone Lab and it's literally throughout the entire campaign and even with the better controls it still can't escape the many moments when I'm trying to do something simple like climbing on that barrel I mentioned earlier and end up feeling like a mini boss battle. It ends up feeling like one of those surgeon simulator games where you're not in full control of your own hands. Boneworks had big expansive levels with large open areas as well as smaller places like in the sewer section. My favourite area was the tower level where you're going up and around to get to the tower whilst having some nice little battles. Bone Lab is mostly closed off small little levels with lots of moving stuff around and trying to pull levers in hard to reach places. When it does have those moments where you get a little section to play through and get in some combat I enjoyed it and the improvements I mentioned earlier really show but those are very few and far between and the entire campaign has some terrible pacing with multiple occasions where you're left wondering what the hell you need to do or if the game is actually broken which it actually was in one occasion where I had to redo a level because a door didn't open when it should have. Let me go into some details of what I'm talking about. Spoiler warning for those who haven't played it. The first 30 minutes are good. It's a nice little introduction and I love the elevator section where you get thrown into the air. Then when you get out of the elevator you end up in a hub area. I was wandering around figuring out how I'm supposed to carry on with the story mode looking for a door that says story on it or campaign and I couldn't find it. There's a crane at the back that you can move but no idea what I'm supposed to do with it. Then I eventually find a sign that tells me that I need to visit each of the modules in the hub to move forward in the story. So you then have to do arena stuff, parkour levels, attack trials, which should be end game stuff that you do after you finish the actual main game. And don't forget the game only took me 5 hours to finish, 3 hours shorter than the first game, and that's including this obvious padding making me do stuff that should be extra modes. 
I do all that, I climb through to the next area, and it just ends up being crappy physics puzzles, climbing stuff. There is an avatar system I mentioned before, and they have a bunch of different levels that feel completely separate to each other, and there's no cohesive level design where you feel like you're actually travelling from one place to another. You're just being spawned into a level. Okay, so now do this level to try and show what your new avatar is good at. Hey, what about this avatar girl? What's she good at? I know, let's put you in a go-kart, but I'm going to throw in a bug, which means you can't grip with one hand, and trying to drive the cart with one hand makes it feel like shit. So now I'm walking around the track because I've abandoned the go-kart, I have to do three laps on foot, which takes nearly ten minutes, but then I remember, to finish the level, you have to grab the orb for the next avatar and split it in two, but I can't do that because my right hand won't work. I then have to reset the level and do it all over again. Oh, and that grabbing and splitting the orbs thing, I'm not going to bother telling you that, even though it's a new thing, in the first game you had to carry them to the reclamation bin at the end. So we're going to change stuff and not bother telling you. So when I get to the end of the first level with a new avatar, I look at the board and notice that it says 39 out of 40. So I think I must have missed something, so I go back looking around, I can't find anybody. So I figure the game must have bugged, I restart the level, I do it again, only to find out that to finish the level, I have to grab the orb and split it, which they didn't tell me about. How about this small, slow character? I know, let's put you on the fucking moon so you've got nothing to do but walk around and let's not bother telling you what you actually need to do in the level so you aimlessly walk with the shittiest music in the entire game playing in the background. Later in the game, you actually have a small tunnel and you have to go through using the small guy and it's actually fun. You get a cool sense of scale with head crabs looking big and the pistols feel massive in your hands. So why not do that rather than having me on the biggest, emptiest level in the entire game? They've actually added some jump pads on this level, but that's like putting glitter on a turd. It's still a turd just because you tried to make it shiny. Overall, I think the campaign is utter tosh, with only a few moments where I was enjoying it, and those are when the game plays to its strengths, which is when it puts you in combat encounters. The avatar system's really cool, and actively switching between characters based on your situation is a great mechanic, but you only get that for the last section of the entire 5 hour campaign. Rather than throwing these tech demo style levels to introduce each character, why not give you the different avatars gradually throughout the game and let you switch from the start? Now you can build the levels that are flowing together, have sections where you need to be small or tall or strong, and really play to this mechanic throughout the entire game rather than just at the end. I know that it was kind of ranty, but the game felt like it was wasting my time on multiple occasions and that moon level was just straight up taking the piss. The campaign isn't all the game has to offer though, you do have different tact trials where you go against the clock, trying to kill all the enemies in the level as fast as you can. You've got arena modes where you fight waves of enemies with different weapons. You've got experimental stuff like bowling, sandbox modes with multiple areas to play around in, as well as parkour sections where you can run around getting stuck on stuff and swearing. The big addition to Bone Lab though is official mod support. Boneworks did have mods, but they were all made by the community and it mostly consisted of new weapons and empty levels but someone did make a Metal Gear Solid mod with recreations of levels from the game. We're already seeing lots of mods for Bone Lab, with well over a thousand avatars like Spider-Man and Ghost from Call of Duty series. Talking of avatars, I have to commend Stress Level Zero and their IK system. The arms and the way the elbows behave is by far the best on the market, and the way that they handle avatars that are disproportionate to you, with their arms not going through their own body, is really good. The legs though, not so much. Just like with Boneworks, you've got lots of new weapons popping up, as well as empty levels that you can jump in and mess around in. The main thing that I'm personally interested in is some cool mini campaigns, so that I can take the combat that works well, and have some fun and interesting levels to play through, with pre-spawned enemies, props and weapons for me to use. We've seen a couple of things like that, but it's still early days yet. Once we get a bunch of good ones, I'm going to jump back in, play them, and I'll make a video highlighting the best ones. And that's the end of the video. Bone Lab is a disappointment for me personally because the campaign is so poor and it's much worse than Boneworks. I was really excited to play this game, especially after the trailer showing off the avatar switching system, but it wasn't used well, so now we just have to hope the community can unlock the game's full potential.